So far we've only focused on the one ounce Lee key drive slug. In our first test we used an unrifled shotgun and had very bizarre flight characteristics. And this is less about the destination and more about the journey. Next we used a rifled choke tube to impart spin stabilization on the slug and we saw, for the most part, a noticeable improvement in just how the slug flew through the air. But we also saw on one occasion the wadding getting shoved into the back of the slug and completely ruining everything. We've seen what the one ounce Lee key drive slug will do and what it can't do. Now let's take a look at the 7 8 ounce version. Many people have commented saying that they've had much better results using the 7 8 ounce version of the Lee key drive slug. For the most part they're very similar in design. Of course the 7 8 ounce one is a little bit lighter and a little more nose heavy. Now once again we're using off-the-shelf birdshot shells. For the do-it-yourselfer who's not quite ready to get into reloading yet, we want to show that this is just another option for you. Although it's not a requirement, having a Mountain Storm shell prepping tool comes in very handy for making these things. And these things work great for making wax slugs too. And I want to thank RW for supplying us with this cutter and also those 7 8 ounce slugs. You can see how it leaves the roll bead there to hold the wadding and everything in place. It's just an awesome tool to work with. Now we want to address the issue of the slug being stuck or shoved into the back of the cavity. And you can also see we have a lot of extra space there inside the shot cup. We should be able to address both issues using something called nitro cards, which is just a fancy term for uh, 5 8 inch cardboard discs. Now you can buy the nitro cards in bulk and they're about maybe two cents each and it didn't make any sense because I had a 5 8 gasket punch and plenty of scrap cardboard. And I should note that you need a shot cup in order to fill the space between the slug and the rifling. In order for the rifling to work the, the slug has to squeeze through there and that plastic sabo or shot cup fills that space so it will spin. We will be shooting these through the Mossberg 590 with the smoothbore, but first we'll be shooting them through the Benelli Nova with the rifle choke tube. And once again we'll be shooting these at 50 yards. Here's his grouping, but let's look at the high-speed footage to see how he got there. Now if you were just looking at the grouping and try to make an evaluation that way, you really aren't looking at the whole picture. Really this is the only slug of this set that actually oscillated all wild like that. But the strange thing is that particular slug hit closest to the target. So there's really a lot of factors going on here that can throw off your shot. It could be the way RW casts the slugs. It could be that wadding that is missing two pedals that threw things off. It could be the brand of shells that I selected or those homemade nitro cards that I made. And we know that Robert's a really good shot, but you know he's prone to being human too. And like any humble person, he's willing to admit that. We see something very interesting in the shot. Watch closely. We know that when an object's flying at a supersonic speed, 
It has a low pressure area behind the slug. And we can see one of the nitro cards just kind of falling off right before it hits the target. The round is constantly decelerating and it gets to the point where it just can't hold onto that nitro card anymore. Now it appears to me that in almost all these shots there is a nitro card stuck to the back of the slug. And really I don't think that played a major factor in the grouping of these slugs. But every little factor plays its own little role in how a slug flies through the air. So you really want to achieve absolute consistency on how you load them before you even shoot them. How do the 7 8 ounce slugs perform out of a smoothbore shotgun? How good is the smooth bore performance? The answer to that is remarkably good. Despite not having any spin stabilization, the slugs flew nice and straight for us. It has become very obvious to us that the 7 8 ounce slug is a far better slug aerodynamically. There's just something minutely hinky about the 1 ounce Lee key drive slugs. But the 7 8 ounce slugs, they did it right. They got the balance right, and they fly very well. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching.